We can be like Jenna and Julian, one in front of the camera, funny behind the camera. No? All right, all right. <laughs> you can hold your applause, your very unlicensed gay therapist is back. <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. My name is Georgia Bridgers and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey beautiful people, how are you? It is Georgia Bridgers and welcome back to my channel, even though I just said that. I don't know why I felt the need to say it again, but I've already said it and there's really no going back right now, so I'm okay with that. For those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Georgia. I'm 22, I am bisexual. I came out as bisexual when I was 19, I think. It was like 18, 19, 20 mainly 18, 19. And I've been making gay content on YouTube ever since, but I actually really haven't made a gay advice video in quite some time. It used to be my staple, and then, you know, like all things you love and grow to know, you try and run away from it. But I'm back with a Q and gay because I haven't done one in so long, and I wanna see if I'm still good at giving advice. I, I like to think I am, I do, so. We'll see. And I feel really lucky that I get to make this kind of content for you because I understand that some of you who are in the closet or are in homophobic environments are not always afforded the same kind of safety being out and supported on the internet. Which is why I wanna introduce you very quickly to this video's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information sent between your device and the internet. This keeps your personal data protected by big companies or even cyber criminals. So no one will be able to see that LGBTQ fan fiction you're reading on Wattpad. Surfshark also allows you to physically change your internet location. So that means you can watch all the cute gay Netflix shows even if they're not available in your home country or if you're traveling and you need catch up on the L word or whatever. Plus, Surfshark encrypts your data to keep your personal information secure when you're using public Wi-Fi. LGBTQ fanfiction on the go. Surfshark does not monitor, track, or store what you do online. So that means no connection or activity logs. Beautiful people, you can use my code Georgia for 83% off your Surfshark account plus three extra months off for free. Don't be afraid to be yourself on the internet. It's your safe space. So check out Surfshark today. Speaking of safe spaces, this is 100% a safe space. I say absolutely no Instagram names or handles or anything that can link you to what you have ever sent me. This is just a place where we can all continue the conversation talking about our identity. And if you have more questions, you can pop those down in the comments and we can all speak to each other in this beautiful community that we are all in. One thing I will never, ever, ever tolerate is hate. Hate will be blocked and reported. And I also want to remind you all that that while I am queer, I'm bisexual, these are all my own lived experiences and they are not going to touch on the lives of everyone. So I suggest checking out other YouTubers as well, but hopefully I can help share some love and happiness with you today. Here we go. First question, how do I date my bestie? We've kissed a few times and we're both bi. People think we are dating, but good question. Well, I mean, if you've kissed a few times and you're both bi, at that point, like if you actually really like her, put it all out on the line. What is the point in living life with what ifs? You'll kick yourself every day if you live life with what ifs. So you know what? I say fucking go for it. Ask your bestie out. I mean, if you are that close of friends and you probably have no problem speaking about emotions with each other, so I think it's worth it to put it out there on the line. Why live your life with regrets and what ifs? But of course there is that other end of the other 
side of the same coin where it's like, well, what if, what if our friendship is ruined? Which is a possibility. So I think what you will have to do is sit down and just really determine if you're willing to risk your friendship to build something that could be even more beautiful than friendship. Because I think relationships can be even more beautiful when they blossom from friendship because you already have that base love there. And now you just get to share some kisses. So I say go for it. Next question. Is it better to come out in a casual way or more formally? This is such a great question and I get asked so many times like, how do I come out? How do I come out? As I say in all of my advice videos, like you know yourself more than anyone else on this planet. So you will know what feels right for you. And it also can feel right for different people. For example, I came out to my younger sibling Hope through a text. That's not very formal. I came out to my mom by like sitting her down on her bed. She probably thought I was about to say I'm pregnant or something. No, quite the opposite mother. Quite the opposite situation there. For my dad, I wrote him a letter and gave it to him ironically in his closet and I was sobbing the whole time. That's like pretty formal. For some friends, I told I told my closest friends in person because I, I wanted to. I told other people in passing conversation here and there when it became more natural with my identity. You will know what feels right for you at the time with different people. You do not have to come out one specific way. I made a YouTube video coming out and posted it on the internet because I'm dramatic. I'm a Leo, I like attention. So that worked out for me. You will know what is right in your heart. Next. <laughs> this is kind of funny, but I totally get it. I'm so fucking scared about my first time. What can I do about it? This was asked a lot throughout the question and answer box. Scared to have your first sexual relationship with someone, with your partner who is either of the same gender or a different gender or anything like that. A lot of people are saying, I'm scared for my first time with a girl. It's so normal to be scared. But what I can say is that when you are so deeply scared about something like that, you're probably not ready. You know, that's why I waited so long. I didn't have my first experience like that until I was 20 years old. Whoa, because I was scared and I knew I wasn't ready and I wanted to be with someone who I knew would make me comfortable in this very personal first time experience. What I can say to you is that the nerves will dissolve over time when you are with someone that you love and that loves you and wants to, how do I say this without sounding raunchy? That wants to communicate with you while you are in the process of getting to know each other on that level. Communication is your best friend in these kind of situations and it may seem awkward at first but life seems awkward at first. Everything can be awkward till you try it for the first time. Don't put yourself on a timeline. Again, you will know when your time is right in your heart. Don't put pressure on yourself. It's going to be all right, I promise. And if it's not, it'll be a funny story for later, later down in life. So, yeah. Next question. Am I attracted to men or are they just pretty? Every time I kiss a man, I get bored. <sighs> I love this because I resonated so deeply with the every time I kiss a man I get bored because every guy that I kissed except for one before I met my girlfriend I was bored. I think it really just depends on like who you meet and who sets your soul on fire. Before I met my girlfriend I was just kissing random dudes and doing whatever just trying to fit into like the high school college life of hookup culture that was just like cool like who are you making out with at the bar tonight i'm like shit i don't know the girls am i attracted to men or are they just pretty that's that's gonna be a you topic to discover i mean you can find people that are pretty and not be attracted to them or you can be attracted to people it's as simple as that, it is such a you statement. No one can answer this other than yourself. But what I can say is that you determine your sexuality, no matter what society says. So if you think a man is pretty and you're not sure if you're attracted to them and you don't really know what to find in your life, but you're comfortable with the term bisexual, you're, you're bisexual. That is your sexuality and no one can tell you any 
differently. Well, no one in their right mind can tell you any differently. Screw the rules. You determine who you're attracted to. So don't compare yourself to other people and how they determine their sexuality because it's your journey. Simple as that. Next, when I tell people I'm bi, they often start about a trio. How do I react to that? I think what this question is saying is that when you tell someone you're bi, they start talking about a threesome, which is stupid as fuck. And it's such like one of the biggest and honestly most basic bisexual stereotype at this point. So I think this is just going to show the lack of, of depth in this person's uh, mind to automatically think of bisexuality as oh this person is down to have a threesome like when someone tells you that they are straight you don't automatically think they have sex they have sex with people all of a sudden society makes coming out as gay or part of the LGBTQ community in any way, a very sexual situation. It's not a sexual situation, it's a love situation. I think what would be funny, cause I'm assuming this is someone saying it in like a sarcastic way, being like, oh, haha, so you're into threesomes. Don't laugh. Play the dumb, the dumb meme and be like, huh, why are you laughing? and then make them explain it and be like, I don't get it. And make them feel stupid as fuck, cause it's not funny. But it will check them and make them realize that they're being rude. And if that doesn't go over well, just be like, so that's actually not right. Say to them, are you into threesomes? Is that why you're asking? That's pretty weird, we just met. Anyway, I'm gonna leave now. You could go a little more polite route. I like to be a little sassy, but you could go down the route and be like, oh, well, actually, no, this is more of just who I am as a person. It has nothing to do with what I do in bed, and that's also none of your business. So, happy holidays. Turn it into an educational situation. Turn it into a way to make them realize that what they're saying is not okay, because ultimately it's not okay at the end of the day. And they need to be aware that that kind of rhetoric is extremely hurtful. If they love you, they'll stop. If they don't, get them out of your life. Next question. I only feel sexual attraction to men until I think about their Am I still bi? So this definitely relates a lot to the last question where I was talking about. You determine your sexuality. I think that's also just a part of being young. It's normal to be grossed out by that stuff at that age. I didn't want to think about any of that stuff, honestly, till I was like in college. A lot of people, when thinking about sexuality, focus it a lot on sex. And yes, that's very important because ultimately you may or may not be having sex at the end of the day with your partner, but what it really should be focused on is the love. That's what, that's what love is. You figure out your sexuality because you see yourself loving someone, not getting your rocks off every night, which also could be a way, you know, that could be a way to go. But for me personally, I am much more interested in the aspect of love than the aspect of sex. Don't put so much pressure to see yourself having sex at whatever age you are. If that makes you uncomfortable, it makes you uncomfortable and you don't need to think about it. Honestly, even when I was in, when I was a freshman in college and my friends were telling me about the things they were doing with their boyfriends, I was like, oh wow, that's so cool you guys do that. Every night, every night, wow. That's really interesting and I'm very, interested in that. Meanwhile, I'm like getting hives and my like neck is getting red creeping up to my cheeks. Don't put pressure on yourself to be cool with sex. Find who you are. Find out what you love and that will help determine your sexuality. You don't need to think about the parts right now. Just think about who you love. And I believe we're on the last question of the Q and A. And the question is how to know if she likes me. Story of my life. So before I met my girlfriend, that's really all I could think about because I was from Cincinnati, Ohio. Not a lot of people that I knew were out, especially me as a femme girl. I didn't really give off the vibe that I was gay, which is just a whole other societal situation in and of itself that we don't have time to speak about today. 
I'm also attracted to feminine girls, so it was kind of just one big guessing game. In today's day and age, people are becoming much more open with their sexuality, which is so wonderful. And that's not something that I was really afforded, even just back in 2018, just a mere three years ago, so much has changed since. Even you just slipping it out there that like, you are into women or you are into whatever gender, you are queer, that could help like open up the door to bring in flirtation. Recognize that unfortunately some people become flirty because they hear that you are gay and they want to, you know, make out because it's hot and cute. Protect your, protect your feelings most importantly. But you know, in the same way that you flirt with people, check and see if people are flirting with you. Have a friend be your wing person. Is someone looking at you across the room a lot and like looking you down and up and smiling and looking away or like twirling their hair and looking back over? Things like that. Like just the most simple flirtatious things. You can put out those flirty, you can put out those flirty vibes as well. You know what? I lived my life with so much of like being scared to be myself, which in turn made me not talk to people or pursue relationships with people because I was scared of getting rejected. And life is too short for the what ifs. Ask. It's scary, but if the person is cool and a real true friend or decent human being, they'll be like, oh, I'm so flattered. Thank you so much, but I am straight. Or you just found yourself a new boo thing. Cannot more highly recommend dating apps. Some people hate them. I loved them when I was coming out because I was nervous to talk to girls in person and it was a lot easier to talk over the phone and because I met my beautiful girlfriend, future wife on a dating app. So that's how that works whatever, to each their own, to each their own. All right, I think that covers it for this video. Thank you all so, so, so much for watching. Remember, you are on the perfect journey that you need to be for coming out. You will figure out who you are. You are figuring out who you are in the perfect time. I believe in you. Feel free to keep the conversation going down below in the comments and don't forget to check out Surfshark VPN. I love you all. Don't forget to be your best self. Get excited for gay girl summer. Okay, love you all. Bye. Give me a kiss. Bye.